Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and the other day I made a bit of a mistake actually. I posted my performance comparison video with the new MacBooks, and near the end, I mentioned that after a couple hours of benchmarks, both the M1 Pro and M1 Max versions of the Pro 16 had a similar 75% of their battery left. So from that, I extrapolated and assumed uh, that they were pretty similar. So you weren't really compromising on battery life by going with the M1 Max over the Pro, but boy was I wrong, massively wrong in fact, although not through my own sheer stupidity, which is normally why I'm wrong, although I'll come to why in a second. So I pinned a comment about it and also trimmed that bit out of the video so it wasn't going to be misleading anyone, but I figured this called for a proper test. And also I now have the 14 inch with me as well. So let's do it. Let's see how these actually compare in terms of battery life, how wrong I actually was, and I guess which is best if battery is important to you. So here's the lineup. We've got the MacBook Pro 13 with the M1, we've got the 14 with the M1 Pro, the 16 with the M1 Pro, and another 16 with the M1 Max. This was quite an expensive video to make. Uh, only one of these is a review unit. So uh, if you do enjoy the video, a little like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. So let's start with a heavy use rundown test. All laptops have been set to the same brightness, around 50%, but using a lux meter, fresh restarts, all background apps closed to start with. And I want to kick off with this Ripple project in Blender, because as I mentioned in my performance test video, this is actually a really good visualizer of the power difference between them. And really, only the M1 Max can play this smoothly. This is the top spec Max, by the way, with the 32 core GPU and 64 gigs of RAM. So one hour later, and wow, yes, there is definitely a trade-off here. The 16 Max is down to just 41%, whereas the 16 Pro is still at 73%, the 14 Pro is at 58, and the 13 is at 73. So not a great start for the Max, but I was also curious about the temperatures. So I grabbed my uh, trusty thermometer laser gun, which I've put somewhere. And so right at the end of the Blender test, I measured a peak 37.8 on the 13, 43.3 uh, on the 14, 36.5 on the 16 with the Pro, and 43.2 degrees on the 16 with the Max. So the 14 inch M1 Pro and the 16 inch Max were the hottest. Although I would hazard a guess that the worst offender would probably be a 14 inch M1 Max. Although sadly, I don't have that one with me here. But let's now do an hour of YouTube in Chrome with 1440p playback, not as demanding as Blender of course, but it's a bit of variety. And so two hours in, we're now down to 63, 44, 64, and 30% respectively. But let's move on to video editing. And while Final Cut Pro is of course the best optimized for Max, I use Premiere Pro, it's still kind of the industry standard. So I loaded up a recent edit I've been working on with multiple 4K, 10-bit, 422 video tracks, color corrections, transitions, the usual stuff. And I extended it to an hour in length in the timeline. And with full resolution previews, I played it back. They can all be a bit choppy sometimes depending on what's playing, but certainly the M1 Max does perform the best here. Although it is also the only model on test with 64 gigs of unified memory, you can see it's using up to 42 gigs, with the others bottlenecked to around 12 or 13. But just before the three hour mark at 258, the MacBook Pro 16 with the M1 Max kicks the bucket. It's done, leaving the 16 inch M1 Pro with 46% of its battery left. The 14 is down to 20% and the 13 still on an impressive 44. And then we were down to three. And so from here, I rinsed and repeated those three tests, but just for 15 minutes each to keep things fair. And in the end, we're looking at five hours 20, three hours 44, five hours 35, and as we saw, two hours 58. Of course, your mileage may vary, but it is a bit concerning that we only just about got three hours of moderate to heavy use out of the Pro. And in fact, an hour of that was YouTube as well, although in Chrome, although it is the M1 optimized version of Chrome. But still, the fact that this still had 46% of its battery left when this died goes to show that under load, that Max has a massive impact on the battery. Although to be fair, older MacBook Pros or indeed any Windows laptop with a dedicated GPU this powerful would probably give you half of that. And crucially, you wouldn't get the same performance on battery. Although the good news is that both the 14 and the 16s support fast charging now, although you have to spend the extra 20 quid to get the more powerful 97 watt charger with this guy. And also fast charging only works through the MagSafe port on the 16, so bear that in mind. But there is another device here that also supports fast charging, and it is 
this guy. You may have noticed I've been wearing the new Fossil Gen 6 smartwatch because they sent one over for me to have a bit of a play with and also kindly sponsored this video. And it's got a stunning design. And also like the MacBooks, we've got faster charging. You can top up to 80% in just half an hour. And that's along with a solid battery life, although it depends on how you use it. Uh, we get the brand new Snapdragon 4100 chip, which is 30% faster than the previous Gen 5, as well as Bluetooth 5. We've got Google's Wear OS software, and of course, access to more apps and health tracking features than you could shake a stick at. Now, of course, a lot of Mac users will have iPhones and then they'll want to pair it with an Apple Watch, which is great. But I think the Fossil Gen 6 is a genuinely good alternative. It comes in a range of finishes with your choice of band. I've got the very classy gunmetal stainless steel one here. Although I did have to take a couple of the links out to fit my pretty small wrists, but I must admit it does look good. So if you fancy yourself a new watch, then click the link below and take a look at the new Fossil Gen 6. Okay, back to the MacBooks. And not everyone is Blendering and Premiere Proing all day long. What about a more general light use rundown test? How long do these last? Well, I tested them with a bit of YouTube and Safari, some FaceTime and Zoom calls, less demanding Apple Arcade games, Spotify, Google Docs, you know, normal people stuff. And after two hours of YouTube and Netflix, we're down to 88, 73, 87, and 83% respectively. Now, instead of boring you all to death, let's just jump ahead to the final results. There's a far less significant difference between the two 16-inch models now. The 14-inch Pro is in last place, and throughout, the 13 and the 16 M1 Pro have been neck and neck. The extra performance and the bigger screen must be quite evenly offset by that bigger 100-watt battery. Interesting. Upgrading to the M1 Max with just light, general, everyday kind of use only takes off about 10-15% of the battery compared to the M1 Pro, Whereas uh, under load and you know, using heavy demanding applications, it's closer to 40 to 45% less compared to this guy. But actually, I think my biggest concern would be specking an M1 Max in a 14 inch, because not only did this have the worst battery life outside of uh, the M1 Max when it was under load, it also got equally as hot. I can't confirm this because I don't have one with me, but I don't think specking a 14 inch with a Max would be the best idea. I would stick with the M1 Pro and only really consider the Max in the 16. But you know how at the beginning of the video I said that uh, I was wrong with my previous test results in the other video, but not necessarily due to my own stupidity. There's another aspect to this because uh, the lovely people over at The Verge, Neelay Patel asked Apple for a comment on the uh, difference in battery between the Pro and the Max. And the response was that both when idle and under load, the Max does draw more power than the Pro. So as we've seen, we do get worse battery life uh, in all situations, although to a lesser extent. But what's really interesting is that if you were to just run, say, Blender for 10 hours, not that they would be able to do that, but you would obviously see about a 40 to 45% worse battery on this compared to this. But if you were just to do say five or 10 Premiere Pro exports, the fact that this in Premiere Pro actually in my tests was about 40% faster than the M1 Pro in here means that it will complete those tasks faster than this. It'll be under load for less time and therefore less taxing on the battery. So the impact of the max on the battery comes down to how you use it and to some extent whether it can complete the task that you're doing faster than this and therefore then the differential between them won't be as significant, if that makes sense. <laughs> but all of that is completely a moot point if you just, you know, plug it into the charger. But my takeaway is the best performance to battery ratio is the 16 inch with the M1 Pro. That's my pick. So I hope that was useful. And if you do have any other thoughts or feedback, then do let me know in the comments below. And also uh, let me know which one of these would be your pick if you, uh, well, if you maybe you've already bought one. If you want one, which one would you go for? Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, as I say, a little cheeky like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that was aggressive.